You know what really bugs me, what really irritates me, is that the fact that the likes of Ed Winters with their bullshit climate arguments about veganism and animal agriculture causing climate change and all this nonsense um, gets so many more views than my videos do. And I talk about very legitimate points like legalising cannabis and having hemp agriculture for carbon sequestration and for fixing nitrogen in the soils. We eliminate our need for natural gas to ride fertilisers and all this sort of stuff. And that obviously gets downplayed in the ratings, doesn't it, on YouTube, Google, etc. Um, because you know like it was drugs right we can't have that in people's recommended because he's talking about drugs and all this sort of thing but on a level also like you people won't like it you won't share it and you won't subscribe so like the message is not going to get out there i'm sorry to say it's not just an algorithm thing it's not just a marketing agencies and a government corruption youtube algorithm thing and having you know government policies dictate what happens on the internet and so on it also does come down to you I'm really sorry, this is like this stuff about cannabis farming and hemp agriculture. I've sort of gone off the deep end really by doubting climate science at all now and, doubt, and doubting the man made model of climate change and so on. Like maybe I shouldn't even, maybe they're right about that. I don't think they are right about that for all sorts of physics reasons that I have for them not being right about it or not thinking that they're right about it. But in many, many videos, I do argue very well, I think, very succinctly and very. In a quite a, from quite an original standpoint about climate change and so or not climate change but cannabis agriculture is important for the future resource security of our planet and so on and um, you know, if we don't ensure resource security we'll have resource wars more of them which the war in Ukraine is obliquely at the moment and we, we're liable to blow ourselves up with hydrogen bombs if we don't sort out where the oil, coal and natural gas are going to come from. If we don't sort out sustainable alternatives to these things. And it's a highly environmentally enlightened standpoint to have an advocacy for hemp agriculture, cannabis agriculture, because it, it encourages mycorrhizal networks in the soils, it allows us to repair, repair degraded farmland. It can even phytoremediate soils after having been you know, after having had a nuclear war. So if we have a nuclear war then it will be absolutely essential. I'm just tempted to believe that there's a certain sort of person out there on both sides of the political spectrum that sort of wants to bring that about, that wants the rapture or the end of days, or wants the final destruction of society and carnage, blood and mayhem. I don't want really to entertain having that sort of fan. <laughs> or entertain having that sort of person in, like, this movement and I think that where are all the other cannabis legalization advocates I I put out this video on um like this deep dive on cannabis legalization again like it didn't get the views that I really wanted it to do it got three likes that's fine there's three nice people out there who like it and understand the importance of that sort of thing it seems and um yeah but like only three people though like really come on and I put out this video on fucking trolley problems, this abstruse shit in philosophy. Oh, that gets 196 likes though, 3,000 views. Like, why the fuck is that? Like, really? Why is it? Is it like, um, because I put out videos about veganism, criticizing the vegan movement ages and ages ago. Maybe it is that even still. And they got like web bots crawling my ass and reporting it automatically bringing it down in the fucking ratings on YouTube and shit like this. I can't fucking stand this nonsense. Like, what what do I have to do other than really be an advocate for hemp agriculture and cannabis farming to in ensure my status is environmentalist hippie activist type? Is that not good enough for you? I'm skeptical about climate change as well, and I think there's far more important things that we should be sorting out from a from a from an environmentalist standpoint, such as habitat loss, deforestation, polluting the oceans, ocean acidification, I grant you that may be a big issue that we have to face in the future, fine. Um, general pollution from plastics and petrochemicals, the stinking chemical plants, and like what do vegans want next? What's the thing that they want, like most of the teams, precision fermentation and a, and a new series of chemical plants internationally producing precision fermented food. Oh, we'll only need it to be about the size of London. <laughs> London is a gigantic city. So you want a gigantic, sprawling mass of chemical plants, of breweries, basically. Great, stinking, horrible, 
breweries brewing basically your food for you some weird form of cheese that's made with some nutrients or like there has to be farms like sugar yeah where's all the sugar gonna come from then do you see what i mean i mean fermentation involves if nothing else sugar of course i'm really disappointed with with the algorithm and the algorithm i'm sorry to say is partly a human thing like if you're not that interested in saving the planet if you're not that like, interested in averting things like nuclear holocaust, nuclear wars, um, you know, like don't be a hippie then, don't support cannabis legalization. If you can go on this, of course this is a case, it's like nonsense. Like just like read up on it, really read about it. There's what psychosis really is, then there's what people think psychosis is. I don't think you think that psych I don't think you know really what psychosis is as opposed to other mental illnesses. By the way, there's all other mental illnesses on the Venn diagram, and then there's psychosis. The overlap between the two is is extraordinary. For all we know, with, with psychotic illnesses, yes, a mild uh, medicinal cannabis may be exactly what they need, or they're taking the wrong form of cannabis, or they hit like some ridiculously strong cannabis or something, whereas they needed some mild indica or whatnot to have a good time on it, or they've had some horrifying uh, Californian hyper-strong cannabis cookie or whatnot that like would would make me psychotic, right? Because <laughs> it would make most people psychotic from like poverty of speech angles if for no other reason, you know, like you've got this formal thought disorder stuff um, that goes in, that plays into the diagnosis of psychosis and so on. You go, uh, what, uh, what's happening? Like, that's poverty of speech. That is psychosis when a stone is like that. Yeah, those, those cookies would make me psychotic. They made most people psychotic. <laughs> By, yeah, a certain, like, um, well, a certain diagnostic frame of reference. Albeit it wouldn't last for 24 hours, so it wouldn't be officially diagnosed with psychosis, not in a medical sense. But, um, yeah, I'm really disappointed. This is horrible. It's a horrible situation to have to live through. It's, it's authoritarian. It's, um, it's, well, it's demeaning to people. People, you know, we're not children. We should be exposed to whatever views, you know, we want to be exposed to. Yes, echo chambers if we want that. And um, it's just, uh, you're trying to police thoughts more or less. You're trying to police public opinion. Public opinion doesn't work that way. We have liberal democracies, ostensibly at least, and you can't go around shutting down people's channels on the basis of misinformation or whatever you'd like to say it is. Because guess what? It is not misinformation. It's based on facts. Yeah. 